Hello everyone, this is Professor Ng Chi Kum from Unimas. In this video, I'm going to give you a lecture on Chapter 3 of Reinforced Concrete Design, which is on Design for Flexure, Ultimate Strength Analysis, Durability and Serviceability. So in general, the required strength and design strength are related as in this equation here, okay, where the design strength has to be greater or at least equal to the affected load effects. So for design strength, we use MRD to uh, denote design strength. And then we use MED to denote affected load effects. Okay, so meaning that if we have a beam, then the strength of the beam is the design strength. Okay, and then whatever effects from loading or actions on the beam is considered as factored load effects. Okay, so in this case, MRD is defined as nominal moment capacity of a cross section and MED is denoted as moment due to the combination of actions so coming from the bending moment due to all the actions huh? okay and then in design we need to look at whether we are designing for positive or negative moments okay so here we have to use a psi convention huh? All right so normally for beams bending in sagging manner where the bending moment is acting in this manner we call it a positive bending moment right whereas if a beam deforms or bended due to the bending moment this way okay so we call this a negative moment okay so a moment that causes compression on the top surface of a beam and tension at the bottom surface will be called a positive moment, which is this. Uh, okay, where on top of this beam here you have compression, and then at the bottom of the beam you have tension. Okay, and then the compression zones for positive and negative moments are shown in the figures below here. Alright, so the figure on the left hand side shows the compression zone of a beam under positive moment. Okay, if a beam is bending under negative moment, then the compression zone is at the bottom of the beam. Right, and then for the positive bending moment, the steel reinforcement at the bottom of the beam will try to resist tension okay whereas for a beam section that is uh, resisting negative moment then the reinforcement on the top of the beam will be resisting tension okay so meaning that the stress uh, symbols will be the opposite eh? for different bending moments, whether it's positive or negative moment. Right? So at ultimate limit state, the concrete in the compression zone will crush as shown in figure 3.2. So in figure 3.2 here, you see that there is a beam with supports at both ends of the beams. Huh? Okay, and then this beam is subjected to two point loads as shown in the figure. So once the beam is subjected to loads like this, then the beam will slowly deflect if this forces P here, okay, increases from zero to the ultimate load. Okay, so this beam will slowly deflect okay under these two loads of p eh? All right so in this case once the beam is loaded until the ultimate limit states 
then the concrete in the compression zone here will crush eh? okay and you see there's a lot of uh, cracks around this region here okay so this region here is what we call as the constant moment region because there is no shear force there okay so in this case you have pure bending eh, within this region here right and then in the regions at both ends of the beam here you have both bending and shear okay so you have also bending and shear over there okay so in the middle zone here there is only bending without any shear okay so in this test beam here you see that there is a lot of cracks okay at the ultimate limit stage and then the concrete here will crush and then the steel reinforcement inside the beam here will you eh? okay it will reach its u stress eh? okay for the steel bar inside the beam there okay so in order to analyze and design for reinforced concrete beams okay we have to identify the types of cross section eh? okay so the first type of cross section here is called a singly reinforced beam okay because we have only tension reinforcement okay so we assume all these sections are under positive moments eh? okay so the second cross section here is considered as debris reinforced beam where you have the tension reinforcement as well as the reinforcement in the compression zone so remember that the concrete here is under compression so the steel that is in the compression zone are compression reinforcement okay and then the third type of section is this T section beam okay which is very commonly seen in the building construction where you have slab and beam cast together right and the fourth type of beam is l section beam where it's at the edge of the building so you don't have slabs on the other side of the beam so the cross section becomes a l section okay and then any of the arrangements of reinforcement as shown in figure 3.3 can be employed in conditions where the beam is simply supported or where it is continuous over the supports okay so this figure 3.4 here shows you the conditions of beam supports so in figure a you have a simply supported beam so this beam when it's subjected to actions okay you only have positive bending moment okay so the beam will deflect like this and then you have only positive bending moment if you have a continuous beam as shown in figure 3.4b here and when this beam is subjected to actions okay so normally these are design actions uh, that we put on the beam so the beam will have deformation like this okay so in this zone here you have positive bending moment okay and then in the zone where the bending is hogging okay then you have a negative bending moment and then another zone which you have a sagging moment then you have positive bending moment eh? okay so this is very important eh? you have to know where are the positive moments and where are the negative moments eh, in a beam okay especially in a continuous beam okay so where beams are used in a continuous situation k must be taken to correctly locate the reinforcement in the tension phase of the beam so as i mentioned just now for positive bending moment the tension reinforcement is at the bottom of the beam 
and then when we have negative bending moment then the tension reinforcement is at the top part of the beam section okay so these are the very important points that you must remember next we'll look at stress and strain compatibility and equilibrium in the beam cross section okay so in this analysis two requirements are satisfied throughout the analysis and design for flexure so first is stress and strain compatibility and second is equilibrium so we must satisfy these two conditions when we do a section analysis so I hope you still remember the stress strain curve for concrete that we use uh, in our design. Okay, so this is the stress strain curve for concrete. Okay, where this is your design strength for your concrete. And then we have maximum strain in the concrete over here. Okay, so this is epsilon Cu. Okay, maximum strain that can be sustained by the concrete and then for steel reinforcement the stress strain curve looks like this huh? okay where the maximum stress is the design strength fyd so this is for steel so similarly this is strain and the vertical axis is stress huh? okay so what it means by stress and strain compatibility in this cross section is that when the beam cross section as shown in figure 3.5a okay is subjected to a positive bending moment then we have compression zone on the top section of the beam and then we have tension reinforcement to resist tension in the tension zone okay and then of course we have compression on top and tension at the bottom there will be always a location where you have neutral deformation okay where the stress or strain is zero there is absolutely no deformation at the neutral axis there okay so the maximum deformation will be observed on the top of the beam section okay so this is considered as the maximum deformation in the concrete okay and then anywhere at the bottom of the cross section the materials at the uh, bottom of the beam okay will experience tension okay so the maximum tension can be observed in the steel reinforcement okay so the concrete beyond the neutral axis where it's in the tension we ignore them okay because for concrete we assume it is very weak in resisting tension okay so in our analysis we assume that concrete has no tensile strength at all so it's not resisting any tension all the tension is resisted by the steel reinforcement okay so over here we have the maximum deformation in the steel epsilon s huh? okay so this is the strain distribution huh? okay as what we mentioned as stress and strain compatibility so now we want stress and strain compatibility we will see how the strain is related to the stress okay we know that the strain here is zero so zero strain will correspond to a stress that is also zero okay somewhere above here we have a certain strain so this strain will correspond to a certain stress according to this diagram for the concrete stress strain curve okay so if the strain here is uh, 0 0.0005 
okay the strain here is 0 0.0005 okay then the stress here will have a certain value so meaning that the stress here will be the same value as this okay so so on and so forth right? you have a strain there so this strain will correspond to a stress based on this stress strain curve okay and then after that we'll plot the stress distribution based on the stress and strain compatibility to get this stress block that gives you the resultant compression c yeah? okay and then as for the steel the steel strain is epsilon s okay so epsilon s we go to the stress strain curve for the steel and then you see where epsilon s is so if epsilon s is here then it correspond to a stress of fyd okay so meaning that the stress here in the steel is fyd eh? okay so this is what we call as stress and strain compatibility for a strain value there must be a compatible stress value eh, from the stress strain curve of both the concrete and the reinforcing steel okay and then for equilibrium okay for equilibrium the total internal force in the section must be zero okay so meaning that the compression c must be equals to t okay so the couple produced by the forces c and t is c times the moment arm jd okay so the moment is c times jd or t times jd okay so this will be the moment of resistance of the section eh, which is equal to the bending moment due to external load effects okay so still remember that the moment of resistance is your m rd and then the bending moment due to the external load effects is m e d eh? okay so in this case we want to make sure that m r d is at least equal or greater than m e d okay and then next we want to look at what is tension failure compression failure and balance failure okay so tension failure is that the reinforcement will you before the concrete crushes so such a beam is said to be under reinforced huh? and then compression failure is where the structural member concrete crushes before the steel use so such a beam is said to be over reinforced and then for balance failure the concrete will crush and then the steel will use simultaneously yeah? so such a beam has balance reinforcement okay so now we want to look at how all those three types of failure is happening yeah? okay so let's take for example this beam okay where you have uh, supports at both ends of the beam and is subjected to a symmetrical load yeah? okay so if this load is p over 2 okay then when we want to plot the load p versus deflection curve okay so this beam will deflect eh, under load okay so this is the deflection okay so if the load p is uh, slowly increasing so here i use p over 2 eh? okay and then in the graph i use p so p is the total of p over 2 plus p over 2 eh? okay so if we start with p equals to 0 okay so when p is 0 then deflection is also 0 okay 
so when p is 0 then there is no deflection so diffraction is also 0 so we have p equals 0 delta equals 0 okay when we slowly increase the value of the load p yeah, okay then p will be greater than 0 in this case so if you slowly increase p then there will be deflection okay so when the load p is increased until a certain point then the beam will start to crack so at the point where the beam starts to crack we call this the cracking load huh? okay once the beam has started to crack then the stiffness will be reduced huh? so this line will follow a slope that is less steep huh? when the beam is not cracked okay until a point okay when the force or the load of p is large enough to cause the steel reinforcement to u okay then the steel will have reached the maximum stress that the steel can sustain eh? okay so at this point we call it py okay okay so this relates to the yielding of steel and after the steel has yielded then the steel cannot develop further uh, stress eh? so the increase in uh, load is very slow okay until a point where the concrete here will crush right so here is concrete crushing eh? okay so this point here is steel yielding okay and then this point is where the concrete cracks okay so this type of beam we call it a tension failure okay so in this case we call it tension failure because the steel use okay before the concrete crushes eh? okay so if you plot the load versus deflection of the beam so this will be the line that you'll be observing eh? if you carry out this experiment in the lab okay so this kind of failure we call it tension failure and then let's say for the same beam but the reinforcement is different okay then we also slowly increases the load okay so when we increases the load and we measure the deflection okay so in this kind of beam let's say if the load deflection curve is always starts at zero okay then when the load is in, is increased okay then you do not observe much of cracking in the beam eh? okay you don't see a very obvious cracking in the beam in this case okay but when it's loaded until a point suddenly you fail okay so this point is the ultimate load pu okay the beam fails okay so in this case you do not have a point where the steel reinforcement is yielding okay so meaning that the deformation in the steel reinforcement inside the beam is very very small so the steel does not you okay so in this case we consider this type of beam as compression failure okay because the concrete will crush okay before the steel can you okay so in this case steel is not yielding okay so we have only concrete crushing all right so this type of failure is considered as a compression failure and then for the third type of beam okay we also plot the load versus deflection curve okay we always start with uh, origin zero because zero load or zero action will correspond to zero 
deformation okay so in this beam okay we have a different amount of uh, steel reinforcement and then when you observe the load versus displacement curve it happens like this okay and when we measure the strain in the steel and the strain also in the concrete so this beam will be loaded until a point where it fails huh? okay so this is the ultimate load that is uh, carried by this beam here so at this point here okay coincidentally the concrete crushes and also at the same time the steel starts to you okay so meaning that the concrete here crushes okay and at the same time the steel inside the beam here also reach a u strain okay the steel just reach the u strain so they happen simultaneously okay so if you look at the stress strength curve of the concrete and also the stress strength curve for the steel okay so for the concrete the strain in the concrete is epsilon cu and then the strain in the steel is epsilon y okay so meaning that at this point here okay the deformation in the concrete reaches epsilon cu okay and then for the steel the strain in the steel is exactly epsilon y okay so if we have this kind of failure we call this a balance failure so as i have explained just now okay for a tension failure the strain in the concrete is the maximum strain epsilon cu okay at the ultimate limit state so just now we have a load deformation curve that look like this okay and then this point is the maximum load location so at this point here okay the strain distribution is something like what is illustrated okay where the steel deformation is beyond the u strain okay so as i mentioned just now the steel will u over there so this is steel yielding okay the steel will you before the concrete crushing here okay so the steel will you before the concrete crushes so when the concrete is crushing okay then the steel over here will have reached a much higher deformation than the u strain of the steel okay so that's why we call this a tension failure okay and then for compression failure the load versus deformation curves look like this okay where this is the maximum load that the beam can sustain so the, here you have concrete crushing okay but the steel is not yielding okay when the steel is not yielding then the strain in the steel is less than the u strain okay so concrete crushing here it corresponds to the maximum deformation that the concrete can sustain eh? so the concrete will crush eh? beyond this deformation okay and then for balance failure just now we observed that the load deformation curve is something like that okay then at this point here you have uh, ultimate load okay so you have concrete crushing and at the same time the steel is just yielding okay 
So this point corresponds to the strain distribution as illustrated there. Okay, so the concrete crushes at the maximum deformation, epsilon Cu, and then the steel deformation is exactly equals to the U strain. Okay, so meaning that if you have a stress strain curve for the steel, okay, like this, okay, then the strain in the steel is just exactly this value here, okay, where this is FYD, the design stress huh, of the steel. So the steel is yielding, at the same time, the concrete is also crushing at failure. So this type of failure, we say that it's a balance failure. Okay, so that's all for the lecture in this uh, video here. Thank you very much for listening.